here from Lung and Sleep. I've got a really interesting case to show you here of a lady with significant abnormality on her chest CT and I'll show you the CT scan and explain it to you and then go on to the bronchoscopic procedure and there's a very interesting finding during radial EBUS examination of the lungs and in the end I'll show you what the pathology results showed. So hopefully this is interesting and you're able to learn something from this fascinating case. Hi, it's Barton Jennings here from Lung and Sleep. I've got an interesting case here to show you. This is a 67 year old lady with a history of bronchiectasis with cough and ex a lot of purulent sputum production. She also has a history of colorectal cancer. So I'll just have a scroll through her CT and you can see immediately that there's significant abnormality in the left upper lobe here with a large, relatively thick walled cavity, which is empty inside. There's no air fluid level. As we scroll through, you can see how large that is. There's some surrounding inflammatory change. And as we come down, there's further nodular change around here. There's another cavity here on the right hand side in the right upper lobe. Some of these airways look, look thickened, consistent with bronchiectasis. As we come down, we can see these airways here are quite thickened and dilated. As we scroll through in the lingula, there's sort of a mass-like lesion here with some surrounding ground glass. Further nodular areas with possible cavitation. And down into the lower lobes, you can see further nodules, cavities, and thick and dilated airways. So we'll just scroll back through here and let's have a closer look at this cavity in the left upper lobe. And if we have a look at the apico-posterior segment of the left upper lobe, which is this segment here, and let's just follow this segment out to that cavity. We've got a branch here. We follow it out. <coughs> and you can actually see that that airway goes straight into that cavity. Let's have a look at that again. There it is, there's communication, direct communication with from the airway into the cavity. So I wonder whether in fact, maybe this is not a cavity, maybe this is actually a dilated airway. Let's have a look at one of the other cavities. Let's have a look at this one here. Looks as if this might be communicating with an airway as well. If you see there's a branch here from the right upper lobe, straight into this lesion, which looks like a cavity. So. The alternative, rather than these lesions being cavities, may be that they're actually dilated airways. These are the coronal views. Here we can see the cavity once again in the left upper lobe. Gives us an idea for its size. And once again, these slices are not, are not quite as thin as the axials, but once again, you can see here's the airway and it looks like this airway is going straight into this cavity area, suggesting that there is communication. So given the history of previous colorectal cancer and that there has been some progression in these changes in the lung, I think bronchoscopy will be useful. It will be useful to take samples for microbiology, but also to try and take some biopsies for histology, possibly from the wall of the cavity or this solid area within the lingula. So here's the bronchoscopic procedure. Now on this screen here we have the radial EBUS image. On this one we have the fluoroscopy image. Now here you can see the bronchoscope sitting in the apico-posterior segment of the left upper lobe and beyond there is the radial EBUS ultrasound within the guide sheath. This is the tip of the guide sheath just there and beyond there you can see the ultrasound protrudes out. Now interestingly on the fluoroscopy you can see the cavity. You can see the outline of the cavity here which is what we saw in the CT scan. Now just watch while we play the video and watch what happens to the ultrasound image as the ultrasound is pushed out into the lung. So here's the ultrasound image being pushed out and this is just air. This is just the artifact from air. 
And as it gets to the other side of the cavity, you can see it's bending around within the cavity. And this is starting to see some solid area here, which is the other side of the cavity. If we come back now, back through the cavity, and down here, it becomes solid again. Just there, you can see a bit of solid area. This is solid there. That's the solid area of the wall. Okay, we're in the air again. Back out to the yeah. other side of the cavity. It's bending right around within the cavity. You can see this is solid on the ultrasound. And once again, we'll bring the ultrasound back. You can see air artifact and solid wall of the cavity. So that allows us to uh, guide biopsies from the wall of, of the cavity. So the histopathology results have come back from the biopsies that I took with the radiolibus through the guide sheet and they've shown necrotizing granulomatous inflammation. And so that would be consistent with a, an atypical mycobacterial infection such as MAC, which this lady had had in the past. The culture results are not back yet, so it'll be interesting to see what they show. But I suspect that this demonstrates that the abnormalities that we saw on the CT scan were in fact inflammatory due to underlying in infection of the lung, which was suspected by the endobronchial appearance of a lot of purulent mucus. And the good news is that this probably excludes the possibility of underlying cancer or metastases from colorectal cancer. So for that reason, it's a, it's a good result. However, this sort of infection in the lung can be very difficult to treat. So uh, there's going to be a bit of a tough time ahead for this lady, unfortunately. Hopefully the treatment will be effective and she'll be able to feel better. Yeah.